My Hero Academia Chapter 250 Ending. So there's two specific things that I want to talk about in this review rather than just going over the chapter in its entirety because I think they're super interesting, so let's get into it. So we're getting some more insight into Toya in this chapter, and there's like three bits of information that I think are giving us some clues as to what could have happened with him. So around the time when Ray was admitted to the hospital, this was like after she poured the boiling water on Shoto's face, this is when Toya allegedly kicked the bucket. And then as a result of that happening, her condition got even worse. So Fuyumi saying that makes me think that Ray was already in the hospital when this happened. So let's keep that in mind. And she also says that Natsuo feels that Endeavor killed him. So I don't think he like literally thinks that like he like murdered him or anything like that. But I think this more or less means that Natsuo feels that Endeavor is responsible for his death. So putting all of this together, I think I've come up with what could have happened, or at least had a better idea when that I originally had. So if we're going back to the time frame that this is happening, we can assume that Endeavor has already started training Shoto. So I suppose that he just abandoned not uh, Toya at this point because he just put all of his focus on Shoto because Shoto was the perfect Pokemon that he always wanted. He got the abilities that he was looking for and obviously Toya didn't have them. So maybe he just put Toya to the side, you know, because like we see Toya playing in the in the yard with like um, Fuyumi and Natsuo and he's like dragging Shoto along. So we know that Endeavor was definitely training Toya because he says Toya was almost perfect but he adopted Ray's weak constitution, meaning that he was weak to fire. Uh, just the way that Dobby is, you know, when he uses his quirk too much, he starts to melt his skin. We saw it when his fight against Getin, and then we can totally assume that's how he got his scars, and I'll go into that shortly. So we can also assume that he was probably focusing on Toya a lot before, you know, uh, Shoto came along. So I assume that all of that attention and all of the training gave Toya, like, validation, and then suddenly you just take that away, and then you're just pushed off to the side like you're just an afterthought, like you, you know, the, you're the uh, the stepchild all of a sudden. Maybe that made Toya jealous and he did something that led to his death. And then this is why Natsuo feels that Endeavor is responsible for it. So I originally said that Endeavor just trained Toya too hard and then that led to his death. Maybe he was trying to make him learn the flash fire and he overheated and then they just supposed that he was dead or something. But now I'm thinking that with the information that we have here, maybe Toya tried to improve himself. Maybe he did some of his own training. Or maybe he was overtraining and then it just led to his own death. Or maybe he fought a villain or something like that. And then maybe he just was presumably dead because of that. Maybe he was just essentially trying to prove himself to Endeavor because he was, I don't know, felt abandoned because all of his focus went to Shoto instead of him. And also the burn marks on Dobby, they resembled the same pattern that like Endeavor makes. So maybe he was trying to replicate Endeavor or maybe just the technique that he was trying to do just involves him using the same pattern that Endeavor has. But they are definitely some insight and clues as to what exactly happened with Toya because uh, you know, he definitely is Dobby, it's just, matter of time before it happens as i always say and i'm sure 89 percent of the people uh well maybe even more already know that but we're just looking to him for clues essentially but i think more or less it's one of the two here either he got overtrained or he kind of just uh i don't know almost killed himself uh, as a way of proving to endeavor that he was worthy or something and that's why natsuo feels that endeavor was responsible for it because if he was just a better dad then he wouldn't have led to those mistakes and those choices to be made. So now let's go into this new villain revealed by the name of Ending. So first of all this guy is using the quirk boosting drug because first of all we see the pupils of his eyes in that first panel on the second page and then once it goes down and he activates the uh, the little syringe thing that he's plugging into his neck he loses his pupils and then he doesn't have pupils for the rest of the chapter and this is very similar to that uh teller of the stars or the that the, the guy that can control glass from a couple chapters back 
it was heavily implied that he was on the quirk boosting drug as well because he had lost his pupils and then they said like his quirk was suddenly like way stronger than what it originally was and then he just went loco one day out of nowhere so i assume some, the same thing is happening here and that guy was also kind of targeting endeavor and the dialogue that and the rhetoric that he was spitting was definitely in relation to endeavor so whoever is giving these guys the quirk in, uh, enhancing drug is targeting endeavor like endeavor is a target here so this could be dobby uh that could be the one doing this here because we are getting some serious focus on Toya, the most focus that we've ever had on him. So it seems like the Dobby reveal is around the corner, and I think it might be revealed that Dobby, uh, you know, through the control, the overall control of the Paranormal Liberation Front is uh, aiding him with doing this, but he's probably just in control of this operation, and he's focusing on Endeavor, and then once all of these little storylines connect, we're going to get the big reveal there, but... Let me just go more into this ending guy. So he's like an Endeavor stan, like a psycho stan of him. And apparently seven years ago, he was taken in by Endeavor. And I think the seven years has some significance to it because they wouldn't just say like seven years for no reason. Like it's said twice in this chapter. So it's possible that seven years ago was like when Toya, uh, you know, kicked the bucket, allegedly. You know, maybe that's when that incident happened. And maybe I'm wrong. But I don't think they ever outright say the exact timeline of this. So maybe it's seven years. I thought it was like 10 years. But I guess I'm wrong. Maybe it is seven years or something like that. Let me know in the comments. But let's get into this guy's quirk. So I assume this guy has like a paint manipulation quirk. Because he's manipulating the road markers. Uh, you know, like, and it's typically made of paint. So if he doesn't have like paint uh, manipulation powers, he has like polymer or resin manipulation but most likely it's paint because that's typically what the lanes and the road markers are made out of and i think that he's able to manipulate it with such like crazy ability at this point because of his quirk boosting drug i mean we saw the same thing with the the teller of the stars or whatever that guy's name the glass manipulator guy like he was just ripping glass from the buildings making spheres and craziness out of it and he probably couldn't do like anything close to that beforehand and i assume it's similar with this guy like maybe he can manipulate uh, a paint just like a little bit you know but this is like taking it to the nth degree we also saw it with that that dude from the uh his Kai, like how he could just pull those two little blade or three blades out of his forearm but then once he took the drug he was like crazy like sword spears out of his body so i think we're seeing a similar case here but yeah that's pretty much it and i assume that endeavor is going to take care of this guy pretty easily and maybe the big three gets involved somewhat but more or less i think this guy is going to trigger a flashback for endeavor and we might see what happens to toya possibly because like i said it might relate to the whole seven year thing or when he got this guy it might have happened that day or that around that exact time that toya uh the incident happened with him possibly and then you know like i said this is probably all connected to dobby but i think at the at the least it's connected to the paranormal liberation front like i don't know if this guy was broken out of jail he just says relief
if he was a Tartarus. I don't know if all villains go to Tartarus or not. I don't think they ever made that clear distinction. But if he wasn't Tartarus, then it's unlikely that he was broken out. So maybe he was just in like a regular quirk villain jail if that exists. I don't know. But let me know what you think about all of this in the comments. If you liked it, guys, please give it a like. I also have a Patreon. It gives you access to a weekly Q&A. And if you haven't already, please subscribe as well. Have a great day.